dungeons are easily the most sought after challenge to accomplish on Hypixel Skyblock, as it's what most people consider to be the most enjoyable, alongside many other unique fights. Players will spend many hours of their day grinding their skills, earning coins, and leveling up their profiles with the sole goal to tackle these fun yet challenging bosses, which after all, makes a lot of sense considering that these are some of the best parts of this game. However, it is no secret that Party Finder is notoriously bad for throwing runs, being super toxic, and making the entire team experience an absolute nightmare. Not only making it really difficult to actually learn certain mechanics in the first place, but also making grinding these fights equally as messy. As a result, this deters hundreds if not thousands of new players from ever getting a good dungeon experience, which can be super demotivating and oftentimes pushes people to just give up entirely. As a result, I've decided to put together this video, a clear-cut, thorough guide on how you can not only learn, perfect, and pull your weight in any dungeon team, but I will also be equipping you with these skills to solo absolutely everything, whether it's a tier 4 Revenant horror boss or the floor 7 boss fight. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy this deep dive into soloing everything in Hypixel Skyblock. So first things first, what does it actually mean to solo everything in Skyblock? What does everything refer to here? This term can be very broad, so let's break it down at the beginning of the video before I outline some valuable tips. Everything in this case simply refers to all combat related tasks that you'd ever need to complete in this game. Basic activities such as foraging, mining, and farming are already very self-explanatory and they don't require you to be in a team to do it efficiently. However, the same cannot be said for something like dungeons. Every floor is recommended to be played with a full 5-man team. As a result, dungeons typically have a much higher skill ceiling to learn as a result, and soloing them has an even higher skill ceiling than that. Completing slayers are also relatively challenging because if they were super easy, then the market for carries wouldn't exist. If we take a look at Enderman Slayer in particular, there are plenty of people out there that are happy to do tier 3 and tier 4 Enderman carries to help other people get the Juju Shortbow, and this is solely because actually soloing these bosses are really difficult for a lot of players. Either way, the point here is that there are plenty of combat related activities that many players find quite difficult, and especially for the team oriented ones, they can be really hard to learn and get good at if your team just isn't pulling their weight. Fortunately, most if not all combat related tasks all have the same fundamental principles that apply to them, and as long as you get really good at these fundamental principles, that skill set will translate into whatever combat task you choose to do. So then, you're probably wondering, what are these fundamental principles then? What are the basics I need to get good at to guarantee success? Well, these are very simple. Your attitude to the task at hand is the first point. Your knowledge about the task you're trying to complete is the second. How well equipped you are for whatever you're trying to do is the third. And the fourth is how much practice you have. Now this all likely sounds super vague right now, so let's just jump straight into the first point, which is your attitude to the task at hand. A big problem I typically see with newer players trying to run dungeons is that their attitude towards completing them is that they're heavily team reliant or that you need good coordination and teamwork to be successful. Now yes, having perfect coordination and a strong dungeon team is going to make your runs extremely efficient and will be more successful than any solo player could ever be, but it is absolutely not necessary for even just average completions. It is very possible to do every combat task in this game fully solo, and while they won't be the best runs possible, nor will they ever be world record worthy, you can still get good enough at them to where they're passable and will set you up to eventually join the highly efficient teams. What's also important to note here is that even if you are a part of a 5-man dungeon team, you should always expect to have to do all the heavy lifting yourself. This is because if something goes wrong and your teammate isn't able to pull their weight for whatever reason, at least you'll be able to fill in for your role and their role, and your run can continue on without them completely fine. Regardless, once you've accepted that you need to be the one in charge of everything no matter what you're doing, the next important point you need to get used to is being well informed about the task at hand. Another huge problem that I see, particularly with new dungeon runners, is that they just go in blind without a very good understanding of the boss fight's mechanics. Most people will just QP find when they have the recommended gear and catacombs level for a certain floor, and then they just wander around in the clear, try to get some secrets, and then when it comes to the actual fight, they sort of just attack random mobs and hope for the best. Now while you can definitely get away with this for floor 1, you certainly cannot pull this off in something like floor 7. 
This is why I highly recommend reading up on the wiki before you even attempt any dungeon. However, this also extends into attempting a new Slayer boss or participating in events such as the Mythological Ritual. Reading the wiki pages for a specific Slayer boss or a dungeon floor is a great way to have some idea of what to expect before you try it, because that way, you'd actually know that the Chaos Guardian only attacks those that are close to it, or that the correct coloured Livid is on the ceiling of the Floor 5 boss fight, or even that the hits phase for every Enderman Slayer boss has exponentially increasing damage the longer it's alive for. If you didn't know any of these mechanics that I just listed off, then it might be time for you to start reading up on the fights you thought you already knew about, because the more well informed you are about something, the more prepared you'll be when it comes to tackling it. Another alternative to reading up on the wiki can be to ask somebody to teach you these mechanics. However, I understand that most of you don't really have people around you that you can just ask for help, which is why I think the wiki is the best options for most players. Pairing the wiki with guides on YouTube or even just basic gameplay footage can also be a great way to learn the mechanics, because at least you're getting some visuals of what to expect and you'll know roughly what to look out for when you try it yourself. Be very careful with dedicated guides though, because these can easily become outdated if specific updates patch certain methods or they might only cover one of the many ways to do something. As a result, I'd generally stick to reading up on the wiki and then watching some recent gameplay of the fight you're trying to beat, because this is usually the best way to learn the most up-to-date strategies or boss mechanics. While basic game knowledge is one of the bigger issues with newer players, by far the most overlooked yet most important thing you can do has got to be the use of correct gear. And no, I'm not talking about getting carried to floor 7 and then buying 3 quarters of Necron with a golden head. I'm talking about the plethora of support items that will hard carry your gameplay. Most players think that in order to complete certain dungeon floors, you need to have a specific set of gear. And while this is partially true, there's a lot more to it than you actually think. Oftentimes, you can actually get away with being heavily undergeared as long as you make up for it in other areas, such as using full Protect the Dragon Armor to complete Floor 6 as opposed to 3 quarters Necron. The reason this is possible isn't because Protect the Dragon is secretly as good as Necron. It's because Protect the Dragon is good enough that when paired with a Wand of Atonement, a Florid Zombie Sword, and a Mender's Crown, it can be a fully self-sufficient healing setup that can tank the Terracottas in Floor 6. The use of these extra support items are what really elevate your gameplay to the next level, because now you're able to be self-reliant for both healing and tanking, removing the need to have both a healer and a tank on your team. Once you begin to realize that going for the strongest weapon and armor upgrades isn't the play, this is when you'll start to see more success in every area of combat. The same logic applies with other bosses. Can't get past the immense hits phase? Try using summons to shred through it safely. Gaia Constructs are dealing too much damage? Try using an Endstone Sword to reduce all incoming damage by 50%. Not regenerating mana fast enough to kill a Blade Soul? Try placing an Overflux for support and seeing how that helps you. Even if you have the best armor and weapons for the task at hand, if you can't even heal your health properly, regen mana fast enough, or move around as quick as needed, you're just going to end up dying anyways. People severely underestimate the power that support items have, as these will go a long way in not just helping you solo bosses, but even in team situations as well. Because this is arguably one of the most important points of this video, I'll quickly list out some of my favorite support items and roughly where you should expect to use them. To start things off, we've got the Wand of Atonement. This thing is an absolute must for anything you want to do in Hypixel Skyblock. I cannot stress enough how worthwhile it is to get Revenant Slayer 7 to unlock this thing, because once you have it, you will never not bring it with you everywhere you go. From soloing Slayers to fighting dungeon bosses to defeating burrow enemies or taking out the Kudra boss fight, the Wand of Atonement excels in keeping your health in check at all times. The Wand of Restoration, Mending, and Wand of Healing are also good before you reach Zombie 7, but whatever you do, push for the highest upgrade because I can promise you it's well worth it. The Overflux Power Orb is also incredibly powerful. The Mana Flux and the Radiant Orb are somewhat okay, though generally I feel like they're not as useful for most things, and the real power comes from the Overflux. The upgraded variants such as the Plaza Flux or any of the flares are also great, though these are crazy expensive and have higher requirements, making the Overflux more of the entry level option. This thing is incredibly useful for all tiers of Enderman Slayer, taking out dungeon mini bosses, all of the Diana mobs, and Nether Island mini bosses. So for this reason, I'd absolutely recommend getting one because the benefits are unmatched. 
The Endstone Sword is also another criminally underrated support item for how cheap and insanely good it is. 50% damage resistance for 5 seconds and a massive boost in damage? How could you not want to be using this thing? The Endstone Sword is perfect for whenever you're struggling to tank any sorts of damage, whether it be tanking the hits phase of Eman Slayer or trying to take down a Gaia Construct. The only downside to this is that it eats up all of your mana in the process, but if you have a power orb or you're really good at managing your mana, the trade-off is absolutely worth it. And best of all, this thing is under 150,000 coins and can be Iron Manned easily with the end nodes in the end, so you basically have zero excuse in not going for one. Next up, we've got the Florid Zombie Sword. This thing is the perfect panic healing item, allowing you to burst heal from very low HP right up to full HP in under a second. Pair it with a Wand of Atonement and a Power Orb, and you're never going to struggle with regenerating health ever again. Downgraded variants such as the Ornate or regular Zombie Sword also do exist, but I'd highly recommend spending the extra coins on the Florid just because of how good it is. The Wither Cloak Sword is a little bit tricky to acquire, but once you've got the Floor 7 completion, this thing becomes insanely useful. Having literal invincibility as long as you have some mana can come in clutch in so many areas, whether it's trying to get past some tough mobs in a dungeon, or if you're tanking a Yang Glyph in the E-Man boss fight. Similar to the Wither Cloak Sword though, we've also got the Gyrokinetic Wand. Now this thing's requirements are way higher than anything else on this list, However, when you do eventually reach E-Man Slayer 6, I couldn't recommend getting one more. Pulling mobs together is an extremely useful tool for dungeon room clearing and some boss fights. And last but not least, we've got the Ice Spray Wand. This one is also very tricky to acquire, but if you've got the funds for one or you are lucky enough to drop one, it is a crazy good dungeon carry. Freezing any mobs you're struggling with on the spot is insanely powerful for taking them out, and it's even useful for just freezing certain bosses because it gives you a 10% damage increase as long as the spray is active. This support item is definitely more of an offensive one, but it's just something that I had to mention on this list. However, the last and probably the most important point of this video is also the simplest one to understand. Practice, practice, practice. I know it's probably not the advice you want to hear as it's something you likely already knew, but most people really don't understand how much experience really comes into play. As someone who's been playing for over three and a half years, I can assure you that without the thousands of hours I've put into this game, I wouldn't have been able to do a lot of the crazy things I've done. Just for reference, I've soloed every single dungeon floor up until floor 7, I've completed every tier 4 slayer boss excluding blaze slayer in full superior dragon armor, and I've done 3 of the 5 kuja fights entirely by myself. Everything I've mentioned in this video I follow with my own gameplay. I've read up on the wiki to fully understand boss fights, I use an extensive amount of support items to assist my gameplay, but by far the most effective thing I've done to succeed in this game is quite literally to just go out there and do it. You're not going to succeed on the first try, and you might not even succeed on the 10th, but as long as you practice, you refine your skills, and you're constantly looking at how you can improve your actual mechanical skill, you'll see success come eventually. The more time you spend asking people for tips, the less experience you gain practicing the fights you're trying to beat. The more money you dump into useless weapon and armor upgrades, the less experience you gain from practicing the fights you're trying to beat. The more videos that you binge in the hopes that you'll somehow get better at the game, the less experience you gain from practicing the fights you're trying to beat. If you haven't figured it out already, the best thing you can do to improve as a player is just to play the game and work it out as you go. Nothing beats raw, hands-on experience, and for that reason, I encourage you to take the tips I've told you in today's video, apply them, and then go out there and start doing the things that you've always wanted to do. But with all that being said, that covers the four fundamental principles that apply to everything combat-related. If you accept the fact that your goals are possible, you do a little bit of research to prepare yourself for the fight, you bring the right support items, and you practice it, you'll most definitely start succeeding in this game, and you'll also be fully capable of doing things without a team. If you are still struggling even after you felt like you've done these things, or you maybe want some extra guidance taking off these principles though, then I would like to point out my channel memberships as I do have some pretty neat perks up for offer. All tier 1 members get access to a special channel in my Discord server which I actively provide personalized guidance in. And tier 2 members get the option to have me explicitly view your profile, provide detailed help on how to improve, and in some cases I'll even sit down with you and critique your gameplay to see where you need improvement. 
On top of this, as a bonus, I give all channel members early access to these videos that I post. So if any of these perks do interest you or you'd like to learn more, click the join button next to the subscribe button for more info. Regardless, I hope you found this video useful, informative, or enjoyable in some way, and good luck soloing everything out there in Hypixel Skyblock.